Hello, I'm Morris Kohansky, Wilderness Living Skills and Survival Instructor in the Northern Forests. Today's topic is going to be about plant study, how to learn as much as you can about the natural environment, the wild plants, ed edible, useful, medicinal, magical, poisonous. Now, Karamet has been involved in the production of a lot of literature and DVDs on plants. We have a series of seven DVDs on the most useful plants and two more on the more dangerous plants. We also have a booklet that can be downloaded in eight and a half by 11 on the 21 most important edible native plants and so on. So there is a lot of uh, support for our literature in, in if you look it up under karamat.com in the, on the internet. We have a, a situation here where we will demonstrate the technique of, of taking samples. You take a sample of a plant that, uh, that you feel is representative of what you see around you. You put it down. Now, there's lots of leaves. Take half of them off because they're not really going to participate in the quality of your, of your image. And you put the plant down, usually off to one side, so you leave lots of room to write. And you take ordinary dollar a roll tape that you get at the dollar store. You learn how to cut it with your eye teeth if you have any. And you tape down the plant. Any part of the plant that isn't taped down will dry and disappear. So you have to tape the whole, the whole plant. Now I got into this issue of using the uh, clear carton tape and whatever in that in my early part of my career we found that the students were very interested in the plants and as you talked about plants they tried to take pictures but the pictures wouldn't be developed till the course is over they tried to take samples but the samples would fall out of their log books etc and so on this one occasion of which this is the original that goes back to probably about 1973 or 1974 this was a book that's actually falling apart in that there were so many plants in this bound uh, scribbler, uh, hardcover scribbler, that uh, it was almost like spread out completely. And so as time went on, parts of it broke off and so on. We learned here not to put plants on both sides of the sheet because that is the result, molding. Stay on one side and you will see that the plants will not mold uh, as, as we have here. And then after you've gathered the plants, even though it might be drizzling or or raining, the paper may be wet, but take steps to dry it out right away. But here the images are still usable, but basically these images for me were a record of the plants that we were covering. So that's one way to sort of keep a handle on just how much you're learning by the thickness of your, uh, of your uh, collection. Here, for example, is uh, perhaps the, the collection of one individual, which might range uh, to n numbers of, of uh, plants, uh, numbers of books, uh, 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 loose leaf binders. The more fragile the plants, the, the more effectively they seem to preserve them. This plant here, for example, is, I recognize it as bed straw. Now, some tapes or some photocopiers, if you put that on a photocopier, you'll get a remarkably crisp Im image. So you can multiply something like this into a class set by, by just simply photocopying multi-copies. The delicate plants often are, are um, more uh, better preserved. Here is hazelnut. And so here we have a sample stick and then the leaves. Usually you often turn over one of the leaves so you got underside and then the top side of the others. And if you've dried it properly, uh, to all, I would probably say maybe this is 10, 20 years old and it's kept its uh, appearance. In the old set here we find that some of the tapes we used yellowed with age, which unfortunately we have no way of knowing that would happen. Other tapes we use seem to um, fare really well. We see staining coming through on some of the pages because the plants were so wet. Well, if you dry it so that this dries out very quickly, you minimize that. Uh, some plants are very acidic. When you tape them down, they'll just completely disintegrate the paper sort of thing. Now, some people like to get an idea of what the whole plant looks like. 
In some cases you may have uh, uh, six, eight sheets laid out and the plant put on and a system developed where you unfold it or they're just numbered and you lay them out like a puzzle so you can see the whole total plant if you wish. On the other extreme, it was common for me to work with kids and we would make our own booklets and they would have to pick a leaf of the plant and it would have to fit nicely on here and leave a little bit of room for, for text. Now with a lot of these two, we would do the, the, um, the trick of putting the name, but fold the corner up first, writing the name there, so that when you go like this, you can't see what the name is. So you try to name the plant, and then you verify to see if you are right. In some cases, you, I would uh, give marks for various things. Here, for example, was the making of cordage and fish line and the making of a Saskatoon gorge. These are taped down to keep them from getting lost. For example, here the student is learning how to make a pack strap in miniature using cattail ease where you start with the, a bit of uh, rope material for tying onto your pack frame and increase finally till you get to a size of pack strap. This is in half scale actually, but there are hundreds of these sort of activities that can be taped down and kept in place and kept from getting lost and the, it's like mini crafting. So the situation here with the tape, you usually go for the cheapest tape, usually go for the cheapest paper and it works the best. A lot of people start going to Bristol board and heavy paper and it doesn't work as well. The, the, the uh, specimens tend to mold more and, and so on. Uh, the paper that is uh, brown or, or this gives an element of antiqueness. When you are using the tape, you have to learn to save time by cutting with the fingers and always not letting that down till it's scrunched so it's easy to find the second time around. And then you, you uh, uh, can put down the tape, pick this up and very readily again make it. And that's how you collect samples and it accelerates your ability to learn the plants very significantly. Now the plant identification and uh, uh, some of the usages of the plants are found on DVDs. There is now I think seven uh, on the very useful plants and two on the dangerous plants. Also there is a manual that is associated with those discs uh, DVDs that is called Rogers Herbal Manual which is an encyclopedic rendition of the usages of all the plants that are found on the DVDs.